Hello everyone, let's solve the problem of the day. Uh, well, today we have fraction pairs with someone. Uh, let's read the problem. The problem says that you are given n fractions represented as two lists, numerator and denominator. The task is to determine the count of pairs of fractions whose sum equals one. So as the example says, you are giving the size of the array and then you are given two arrays. The first one is numerator, which is having all the numerators and then we have denominator which is having all the corresponding denominator of a fraction and then we have to return an output what is going to be the output uh, let's discuss in deep how we are going to get to it uh, let's take a look at these two examples and conclude how we are getting to the output so what we have to do we have to find out pairs of fractions whose sum is equals to one so we have fraction one we have fraction two we have to find out such pairs whose sum is equals to one and then we have to count it and we have to return the number of pairs that we have okay uh, so making up the fractions we have one by two two by four two by six and eight by twelve all right and if you see carefully we if we reduce this one this will also be one by two this will be one by three and solving this one, this one will be two times and three times. Canceling it with four, we'll have two by three, correct? So now that we have reduced it, we can see it even in a very clear manner. And we can say that these two make up one, correct? Because if you are going to add it, one by two plus one by two, denominator is same. Numerator is going to be added like this, and which will end up here and this will be one correct so this is one of the pair the count is increased to one and then we have one by three comma two by three again the denominators are same we are going to add it up it will be three by three cancelling it we'll get one thus the answer so this will also be counted and the count will become two correct and that is what we have to return here okay that is what we have to return here let's do the same thing with this example as well here we have 3 by 9 1 by 10 12 by 18 81 by 90 and 2 by 5 okay now if we have to reduce it this one is 1 by 3 this will be 1 by 10 and then this one it'll be your 6 2 times 6 3 times it'll be 2 by 3 and then we have uh, nine, nine times, nine, ten times. It'll be nine by ten, and then two by five as it is. Okay. So now the fresh pairs we have it is one by three, one by ten, two by three, nine by ten, and two by five. Okay. So again, if we see these two, one by three and two by three, we have already seen how it is uh, giving out one. That means count is increased to one. We have already found one pair. Then we can see clearly here, we have one by 10 and we have nine by 10. We have uh, fractions with same denominator. Now what we are going to do, we are going to add them as it is. It will be nine plus one, the same denominator. It will be 10 by 10. Again, the answer that we'll have will be one. Okay, the count will be now increased to two. And there is no other way possible that we can make a combination here. Thus, two is the answer that we are returning okay so now let's understand one thing what are we actually doing i was uh, finding the answers out but what was the procedure behind it what was the intuition okay so the very first step is reducing our fractions or you can say firstly making it because we have two arrays correct we have to make up our fractions then once we have our fraction we have to reduce it correct we have to reduce it and by reducing, I mean converting into simple fraction. Okay. Once we have successfully uh, converted it to simple fraction, then we have to find out pairs. Once we have done this step, we have come to this step, then we have to find out pairs. Okay. And for finding out pairs, we can simply go with the usual method of n cross n. Right, we can use two for loops, 
correct? Like this, and we can uh, find out each and every combination possible, or we can play a little smarter, right? How? Let's see. Let's take that example again. Okay. So instead of first picking up one by two, and then making uh, all the possible combination with all of these, and then picking up two by four, and then making all the possible combinations with all of these, instead of using this n cross n method, we can use uh, a smarter way, correct? Because we do have to optimize it, right? So what can we do? First, let's again get this step completed, reducing one by two, then you have one by two, then you have one by three, and two by three, right? We have the reduced, or we can say the simple fractions. Now, what we can do is we can pick one fraction, correct? And we can find out our counter fraction, uh, or you can say the complementary fraction. And by that, I mean, I have to find one minus this fraction. So it will be your two minus one, two, and I have to look for one by two. Because you can say for one by two, the complementary fraction is also one by two, right? We can look for that here. If we found it, that means we have one pair and we can move forward and we can look for the other pairs, right? So this is going to be our approach. How we are going to implement it? Well, the best way of implementing it is going to be a hash map. So what we are going to do with it, let's see. Whenever we have one fraction, we are going to record it and we are going to mark its count because we are going to keep a track of its count. So assuming I have one by two, I encountered this one by two, I have added it to my hash map and I have given its value one because I have found one one by two till now. Then again, I will look for, I will calculate its counter fraction or you can say the complementary fraction. If that complementary fra uh, fraction is also present in this dictionary, that means we have to increase the count. Okay, that means we have to increase the count. But if it is not present, then what? We can go on and on and we'll be inserting new fractions. For this case, because one by two is already here, uh, when we jump onto the next step, one by two, we'll find out its, co uh, its complement. It'll also be one by two. We'll again go to the dictionary. We'll look, we'll see that one by two is already here. So we will take the corresponding value one and we will add that into account. Why we are doing that? Let me give you an example. Assuming you have one by three, comma two by three, comma two by three. Can you tell me how many uh, pairs are possible? There are two possible pairs. First is this one, another is this one and this one, right? So how we are going to do that using our uh, hash map? So once we record the count of two by three, assume we have two by three and I have recorded the count of two by three as two. Now what I'm going to do is, I will say, I have one by three as my fraction. What I'll do, I'll find its complement fraction, one minus one by three, it'll give us two by three. I look for two by three in my hash map. I'll see the corresponding value is two. Instead of increasing my counter just one time, I'll directly increase it two times. And that means I'm talking about the corresponding count of the counter fraction, okay? So now it is pretty clear how we are going to find the count. And eventually, once we have traversed the array, we have covered every possibility. That is going to be an ON. Once we have done that, that means eventually we will be having uh, the number of counts in our variable. Okay, let's quickly see the algorithm. Okay, so it is simply what we have just done. We are going to be creating a hash map. Then we will be initializing a counter variable. And then we have to iterate through the array and we have to do all these steps for each and every fraction that we have. Firstly, we will compose a fraction. That means we are having two arrays, numerator and denominator. We will have two variables and we will assign the ith values in that. Okay, so that we can better deal with it. Now we have to reduce the function into simple fraction. Then we have to reduce the fraction into simple fraction. So now how are we going to do that? How are we going to reduce it into a simple fraction? Well, very simply, if you remember, GCD. 
that is your greatest common divisor. So what do we have? If we have two numbers, assume if we have uh, two and we have four, well, the GCD for this is going to be two, right? Because two is the highest number that is going to divide both of these. Fine. Let's again see six and uh, nine. Well, for these two, three is going to be the answer because three is the greatest number that can divide them both. We have to find out the GCD and we have to just divide both of the value with it. So if we have six by nine, the GCD will come, uh, come out to be three and we divide both the values, the numerator and the denominator. What will I have? I'll have two by three. And this is the simple fraction, okay? So once I'm till here, that means I've calculated the simple fraction. Now what do I have to do? I have to create the complementary fraction by subtracting it from one. Once I have gotten my complementary function for this example, one by three, what will happen? I'll see that if the complementary fraction is present in my hash map, I'll increase the counter accordingly. That means the corresponding value of our hash key. Okay, that is our complementary function. And I have told you the reason why. Now, if we do not already have the complementary uh, fraction there, what will I do? I'll insert the fraction into the hash map, right? And eventually, once the iteration is done, we have uh, calculated the count. We will return the count eventually, right? Let's see the code for it, okay? So if you see here, I have created a default date. You can simply say that it is a hash map in Python or simply it is a dictionary. Now what we are going to do, I have initialized one uh, variable answer. This will be keeping the count. Now here we are iterating through both of the arrays. We have the numerator and the denominator. The very first thing I'm doing is I'm creating my two variables. That is basically I'm composing my fraction. Okay, so I am uh, taking these two values. Now what I'm doing is I'm calculating the GCD. You can use a pre-built functions for it. Uh, most of the languages support it. Here in Python, I have to import math and then uh, GCD comes with it. It usually takes two parameters and it gives me the GCD of those two numbers. Okay, so once I have the GCD value, then what I'll do, I'll divide both my numerator and my denominator with it. Okay, once divided, that means now my X and Y are reduced to the simplest form. Then I would want my complementary function. So for that, my numerator is going to be my denominator minus my numerator. Why? Because I'm doing one minus X upon Y. So it happens to be Y minus X upon Y. Correct. This is my numerator. This and this is my denominator. This. Fine. Once I've calculated it, I'll check that here. I'll check that in my dictionary, that if that is already present, what I'll do, I will increase my counter with the corresponding count. Fine. And if this is not a condition, then obviously we are going to add the x, y, the fraction that we have in this iteration to my dictionary, or you can say the hash map, and I'm going to increase the counter by one, right? Because we have found it the first time, for the first time. Once this whole iteration is done, we are going to return the answer. Okay. And now let's quickly see how much time complexity is going to take. So what we are actually doing is we are performing a simple iteration through the array. And that is of n length. So we can simply say that we are calculating this in O n. But what we are doing inside, for every fraction, we are calculating the GCD, correct? And GCD internally actually takes O log the minimum of your two values. This is how much time your GCD takes. For us having these values, if you again read the question, it can go up to 10 to the power nine. So these are big values and cannot be ignored. This, this is going to be the total complexity log minimum of a comma b okay so this is going to be the time complexity now let's run this code and see if it is passing all test cases okay so here we have the code let's compile it all right it is working fine now let's submit that 
okay it is passing all the test cases so i hope now you understand how this problem works and uh, you can refer to the solution and be sure that you are understanding it correctly thank you